Hello and welcome to Artists Soar. This is a podcast for artists by three artists. We discuss all aspects of being artists, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The goal of each podcast is to provide solutions so artists can focus on their creativity and soar above. I'm Rachel Harshenko. Jules McCullough. Stephanie Weaver. Sometimes the questions are complicated and the answers are simple. That is a great quote from Dr. Seuss. And in today's episode, we are going to be doing Q&A from our listeners. I have to tell you, you got like your voice that you do for your podcast. And then you got your voice that you talk to everybody else. With. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to talk. No, to our listeners, <laughs> like, every time. <laughs> I know. Well, I try and be professional. <laughs> Very professional. Then we just suck it all away. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Well, what are you, in my professional voice? What are you guys <laughs> working on, Stephanie? Oh, sure. Okay, so what am I working on? I am working on a new collection. So I, I've got one done i'm working on another and i've got like three more to go and then um i'm doing lots of little paintings kind of in between that go complement complement them so i'm just having uh, was it one of those that you just showed us yes i love it's so adorable and yeah and and i'm gonna start showing them on social media um just some of the makings my daughter is making me get on tiktok which don't follow me on tiktok people <laughs> what? No. follow me on like instagram youtube shorts preferably i love yeah. youtube oh um so follow me on youtube and you can kind of see some of these in the making and it's um uh you can search for me there art fur like furry little animals and paws p-a-w-s and watch some of the fun little videos that we put together as the series comes to life. Be fun. Excited. What, what are you working on, Julie? So I am finishing up my Valentine's Day collection of Sea Life Delivering Flowers. I love that idea. Absolutely. I love that idea. So, I think that is so neat. Are you are you publicizing that on uh, social media too? Where should we Not, go look? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> We're so good at knowing what to do, but when we have to do it, we're like, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. I'm just, it was only going to be four pieces. I'm trying to make it up to nine, but I'm pushing, oh. pushing it oh, because wow. then it would be a nice, pretty nine square. Oh, I love that idea though. But I, I do don't much. know. I don't know. We'll see. But. Well, I did some hearts and I'm putting them I'm gonna put them on my website for Valentine's. So she's getting her website. There. <laughs> so what's your website again? Huh? What's your website again? <laughs> well it was one of those things like we were talking about it what last <laughs> don't ask me right now because oh. I just changed the URL and my Shopify account hasn't verified it yet. So is it I'll Rachel it Bell? You. So on the yeah it should be Rachel Bell. Rachel Bell Art or Art, yes. Okay. But it'll be in the show notes. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure Stephanie has a linkable click uh linkable click in the show. <laughs> See, we took all the professionals now away. She's good. Yeah, she just went out the window. <laughs> but before we start on our um listeners' questions, which are so neat. So thank you guys for sending these in. Um, we want to highlight a kind of a local, but you, we always like to highlight some new artist or someone that we have found. And this lady is from Chattanooga. Her name is Allie K A L I K A Y Studio, and um, she's got. It looks like a really nice website, and she has a beautiful Instagram, um, and she does bright, bold, like slashes of color which I love um but anyway she has a it's just beautiful some of her stuff is just fun just fun and not whimsical but fun so yeah very vibrant bold brush strokes is yeah, she so, acrylics or oil 
Um, I think she's acrylic, but don't <clears throat> me on yeah. that. Yeah, online. I like her style. And she too. has online, she has acrylic. It is acrylic. And she has classes. So it looks like you can take her class there in Chattanooga. She's got all kinds of fun things. Ooh, that'd be a fun day trip. Right? So, yeah, yeah she has like little retreats and be sure to sign up for her emails. That'd be great. Let us know what you think about her. So very cool. Oh, she uses acrylics. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming through her site. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Golden. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so, fun, fun, fun. Hey, before we dive into today's topic, I actually made a gift for the artists or listeners, and that's the art business checklist and video guide. This checklist actually outlines what you need to do every day, week, month, quarter, and even year. The purpose of it is to hopefully make your own lives a little bit easier as you're defining your art business. You can go to stephanieweaverartist.com forward slash art dash business dash checklist to grab that free guide now. Again, that's stephanieweaverartist.com forward slash art dash business dash checklist. So Stephanie's going to lead us with our questions and comments that we've gotten from our listeners. Okay. So before we kind of get into that, I do have one more thing for you guys. Um, We get stopped now, like in the halls of Low Mill, um, everybody telling us that they love the podcast. So if you are listening right now, put us on pause and go and leave us a five-star review or some sort of review. Tell us what you're loving and what you want more of even, because we do read those and it's our little happy notes. So Thank you for those that have done it. And we can't wait to read the rest of them. So with that, I'm going to go to our first uh, listener email. And it's uh, I'm going to read the whole thing because it's just like joy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, hey, Rachel, Jules and Stephanie. I look forward to listening to you guys every week. Feel free to use my name, which is Denise. Thank you, Denise. Um, you guys make me giggle and are just filled with such amazing ideas. Thank you for putting yourselves out there like you do. Um, That's really cool. I know that was kind of hard for us, so we appreciate that. Um, So here's my question. I'm not happy with my style of painting at the moment. I've been painting for about two years when I can, and I'd like to have a more relaxed, almost intuitive looking style. What can I do to get it towards the style I want? Good question. Oh, that's, that's a really a good, good question. question. I have so many ideas for this okay. question. Okay. Go. And <laughs> go. Go ahead, Julie. Okay. So if you go on Instagram and you search for challenges, there's um, draw this in your style challenges, which are draw D, this T, I, Y, S, draw this in your style challenges which are fun. There are a lot of times those are characters or portraits, but there's some, you know, there's other ones out there too, but I just find a lot of those are in as characters. There are other challenges on um, there. uh, There should be one coming up called June in bloom. Of course, the major holidays have challenges. I'm going to have another challenge coming up in the spring for springtime with um, four other artists we're joining together to do that. Um, And, okay, so now all these other ideas. Okay, so that's the first one is find these challenges. They're all over Instagram. You just need to search for them. And if you find some artists that have a lot of followers, you'll find challenges in there. Um, If you sign up for Kat Kokolet's newsletter she sends out a a drawing challenge each week i believe Uh it is uh there's courses you can take uh to help with your style um matt's portfolio boot camp is a great one that's make art that sells uh that one is focused it's a different assignment each month focused on trends as well as different types of work to build up your portfolio. So editorial, pattern, stationary, there's all sorts of different things. You just don't know what you're going to get that month. So it's kind of like working with a client and or freelance and getting work that way is another way to help develop your style. 
Um, and I also recently heard from an agent that it's okay to have different styles because it shows your capabilities of doing different things. So if you're trying to work in one medium or you're trying to work and make everything look the same, you don't necessarily need to do that, but you should have a collection in each one of those styles. So if you have, like I have a collection of abstract work, I have a collection of sea life work, and then I have um, my pattern design, surface pattern design work is all rel- is all different, but there is a cohesive piece in the colors and in the um, vibrancy of the colors that I choose. So I don't think it's bad to have multiple styles, but if you want to discover what your style is and perfect one style at a time, those are some ways that you can do that. Wow. Oh, those are some really great ways. <laughs> um, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting here thinking, um, Julie, you're going to do the show notes. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was starting to write some of these down and I'm like, no, Stephanie, I'll, oh. But yeah. there is um, a couple of Skillshare classes too that like oh, help you yes. to draw things in your styles, like just being illustrative. Um, and then I've also seen um, a couple of artists do this in, um, in shape, color, texture. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry. But um, gonna, you can take like, um, and Stephanie, you've kind of done this too, but like an apple or a pear or an orange or peach or whatever, and you draw it or paint it in different artistic styles. Like, so, you know, you want to try it in impressionism or you want to try it abstractly or with realism or um, different color palettes, Yeah, different color palette, um, try and do it with different mediums. So if you, paint and oil, try it in acrylic or watercolor, you know, that kind of thing. Or if you have like three favorite brushes, then throw that out and use, you know, I don't know, Q-tips, a fork, you know, items from like, try it with different tools. So, Well, I was going to mention too, you mentioned Skillshare. There's a great class by Tom Froze. Froese, F-R-O-E-S-E, called the style class. It's four hours, but it's a really good class on helping you find your style as well. Cool. And that's Tom and then the high school last name? F-R-O-E-S-E. Okay, got it. Well, no, I was going to say like, well, one of them was take a class, <laughs> do some challenges. And then the other one that I was yeah. going to say is... um. So you mentioned you went more relaxed, almost intuitive style. Um, A way to kind of exercise that part of yourself is to paint it twice. The first time with the reference image or with the instruction, the second time without any of that. And Mm. just kind of- Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah, it kind of stretches your mind on recalling the imagery and then also loosening yourself away from making it like what you did before Mm -hmm. it works really really good and even try it like uh cartoon style like illustrative like Mm -hmm. different things that way and i mean like as far as like mediums i mean you could even do spray paint um, right digital wash Mm -hmm. whatever i mean it's like try doing it in alcohol markers and then try doing it in watercolor and mm-hmm. oil paints and try just doing it black, black line. Mm-hmm. Oh, Stephanie, you did one. You did it left-handed. Yeah. I oh yeah. Hands. So that was, an, that's another good idea to make you just yeah, not think hands. about painting, but just think about what, what you're painting. Yeah. Well, another thing like is uh, use a really big brush. Yeah. With a very limited palette and that, that constraint, I know we talked about constraints before, which was interesting because it kind of led us to this, but that having those little constraints, like I'm dominant right-handed, I'm going to use one paintbrush with my left hand and um, see mm-hmm. what happens. Because like, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, we're, we're all, we're all kind of play. The play is the fun part and the discovery right. is the, the result. 
you know, sometimes you discover, hey, I really like that. Sometimes you, you're just like, whoa, okay, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was actually surprised about the left hand. Um, yeah, I was really surprised. Yeah, but I would try some um, classes. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, weekends or just, you know, something, just try something different. Yeah. yeah. I love all that. And a lot of them, like if you're a Skillshare member, you can do all this for free. That all those uh, challenges are virtually for free. Um, yep. Turn on some music and just go. Yeah. 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 And that's actually another good idea. Like turn on different types of music yeah. Ooh, and yeah. see what happens with your style. Um, or, you know, maybe it's putting on a podcast and listening to a podcast is what gets you going and into that zone, you know, try different things and make <laughs> note of it. Listen to our podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I turn on Amazon prime every now and then. Now I'm watching the series psych. I have it going on. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, you know, it's just a little bit yep. noise. Well, well and I do that. I mean, shows I've watched a billion times, I just yeah. throw on just so I have the background noise because I don't feel like listening to music. And yeah. I just want to listen to something that I don't. If I put a podcast on, then I need to listen to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if somebody's listening to this one right now, they're probably, oh, crap. And then they're grabbing a piece of paper. <laughs> not, yeah. Um, well, Denise, you're going to have to let us know if you take any of our suggestions because yeah. we'd love to hear back from you. Yep. Cool. Do you have another question, Stephanie? Yeah. So let's see. Um, this one, they don't want to say their name. That's fine. Cool. Okay. It says, um, I love listening to your podcast. It's like being in the room with a group of friends. Yay. Um, when I was listening to the episode about Jules' name, I about spit out my coffee. I laughed so hard. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Julie. Yeah, we got that one too. Uh, um, I would like to have some real life artist friends to chat with like you guys do. What would you recommend I do to meet people like you? Oh, that's kind of sweet. That's really sweet. Yeah. Well, um, the best thing is to find somewhere like low mill or uh local local artist community and yeah leagues mm-hmm. and things yeah so well and i think keep, a key thing to note before we go too deep into to how to find it is is set your expectations correctly because this is not something that i've i personally found on the first go and the first try yeah um it took some time to find the right artist friends that I jived with and that I meld with very well. And so now I know what to look for. And when we are looking for other groups to connect and expand that spider web of connections, I know what to look for that um, like-minded individuals. So I think that's really important to remember too. Because I think a lot of people think, oh, hey, I go to this artist community and I'll meet that person. I I went to a few different artist communities and I really didn't. I mean, I guess I kind of found you. Well, Rachel, I didn't find through an artist community, but Stephanie. I was referred to you, so you I didn't find through an artist community either. I didn't know you referred to me. Huh. Neat. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think Sandra Lancaster. Oh, Sandy. Oh, yeah. We need to tell, talk about her artwork at some point. Yeah, I think she's Ooh, the one that referred idea. me to you. Neat. So, anyways, just food for thought before yeah, we but, dive into all but, the ways to find do this. But you know what, Jules, you're right. All three of us were picky about people who we spend time with. Yeah, yeah. and we still are actually. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, time is limited. And um, get with the people that like feed you and build you up. And and not everybody does that. There's a lot of people like there was a reason why I had a lot of guy friends before. Yes. Because um, girlfriends are harder to find. I think when you have. I don't know. Girls just think of each other a lot of times as competition. I just don't see us that way. Right. Find other people that 
have the same like-mindedness is what yeah. you said. Well, I think the easiest way is to find groups on Facebook. Yeah, but you can't make real life connections. Oh, well, you're talking about finding them on Facebook and then actually going in person. Well, yeah, I mean, just art. I mean, just to chat with. I mean, like, first off, I mean, that would be your first line of defense is like, yeah. oh, here's some other artists. So you can just kind of read what they're doing. And yeah, you're right. That's how I met and, John Medic. You know, he and I were in the same group and he pinged me because I had said something about project management or something in an art group. And um, yeah, you're right, Rachel. You know, so just, I mean, and just realize that that is surface level art people who right. don't know you, but you might connect with someone um, in Pennsylvania or whatever, you know, and, and maybe that's, you just chat via Zoom after that or, you know. Well, and I have a group that I met in a class and we still meet weekly. There's four of us. And that's, we just reached out to each other on the Facebook group. And then I have artists that I've connected with by DMing them on Instagram because I like their work or I had a question for them about their work or what they were posting or whatever it might be. And then both the artist retreats I went on, we stayed connected. So you know, I think it's putting yourself out there into different uncomfortable situations in regards to to art and finding those connections that way, because you're not going to connect to everyone. Right. I can kind of see this conversation flowing with the other conversation we had about, you know, the challenges and the classes and yes. all that, because if you find all those the people that are going to be in those are going to probably be along the same mindset as you. Right. I was going to say classes are a good way to sort of start building your tribe or retreats. Um, Yep. Because you're doing the same thing. You have reasons to question, you know, and then commenting on people's stuff that you want to connect with, trying to make that organic connection that way. Mm -hmm. Um, And then DMing them after they've seen your name pop up a few times on stuff is another way to do that. If you're going to look at Facebook or YouTube shorts or Instagram or whatever your social um, media band is, you know, being real and authentic is number one key though. I think. But if you're looking for some, something local, like you want to end up meeting and like going to have coffee or going to the, is I would, you know, first, Take some classes at the art museum. Mm-hmm. Um, join some art, I don't know, boards or like Huntsville has a couple of different artist communities and just yeah. start from there, you know. Yeah. And if- I don't I was talking to a guy that was going around Low Mill and he was like, I just wanted to be around other creatives and this is I heard this is a place to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, and I think if you're in a rural area and stuff too, um, you're going to have to do a little bit more outreach because you're not going to yeah. have the resources readily available. You may have to drive a little bit to make those connections. But I think if you build them up, you know, it was like when I met Stephanie, I was asking about something and and I could be wrong, but I think that's who referred me. And I just reached out to her and she was more than willing to meet to answer my questions for me. And I think that's what it was. I had real questions and then we ended up in connection again and again, and then we made a friendship from there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these things take time. They can't be rushed and they need to be authentic. I think that's the three key things. But if you are in a rural area, you just may have to make a little bit more effort to make that drive or do Zoom meetings or whatever, you know, Google Meets or whatever. And maybe there's, I, I don't know, is that meetup app thing still around? What was it? Meetup was the name of it yeah. where you could go and, because I know I found some artist groups that way in Huntsville too, yeah. um, oh, back okay. in the day. So back in the day, back in the day, <laughs> like we're old, so, like we're 80. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. And and I love it that you know we, all, the three of us, we're we're in such different uh, places in our art journey. So, yeah, mm-hmm. like that's I think that's nice too. Yeah, yeah, it provides like a really good what like what uh, sounding board all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. I mean, we've known each other, what, like, I don't really know. I keep on trying to guess that, but. It was before COVID, so it had to be at least 2019. Yeah. And it's so funny. I I I remember the first conversation with Julie, and actually that's what, that conversation was the one that led to the book. Yeah, the art pricing calculator. Yeah. And, you know, you You and I met. Not only through Low Mill, but also through BNI. Because I yeah. know you were the artist at this other BNI, which is yeah. a networking group. So yeah, even networking, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a really good one too. Is networking groups are a great way to find other artists and connect connect with them. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's a lot of you fun know, too. sometimes I think it you can go into like we have Alabama goods or something, like go into oh, local yeah. place that have local products and i mean it could be pottery it could be whatever but they're still creatives and artists and get their names you know look them up let them know that you saw their stuff and you know you're interested in connecting so well and i think too remembering that that connection may not be with somebody in your same medium right you know the art world is so diverse i mean you've got interior designers you've got graphic designers you've got painters sculptors ceramics um pottery and stuff so i mean illustration there's so many different aspects to the design and art world that are all within the visual arts that you could connect on a different level with them Mm -hmm. you know and still be able to help each other out so i think that's important to remember as well yeah they're out there. You just got to get out there and meet them. Yeah. And I think it's like, I don't think you're going to end up with a big group. Right. I yeah. think it's. Well, it's one of those things like most of us are, I hate to use the word introverts, but most of us prefer, I'll say it this way. Most of us prefer having real relationships and conversations that are meaningful. And so we're not going to be the types that go out and just kind of, you know, (laughs) can talk with everybody under the sun about the weather right now. No, we want to get to the good stuff of the, you know, the, the art and what brings us joy and the ideas behind it and all that. And Mm -hmm. when you go to these things like Rachel and and Julie are talking about, those are the people that are going to be talking about like what really drives you and excites you. And it's just going to meld um, really well. And then there's going to be scenarios too, that you're not going to like somebody. (laughs) And And the beautiful thing about being an adult is you don't have to put up with it. You can walk away. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because I think we've all been around and I'm like been around the people that just suck your will to live and suck all the they just suck all the air out of the room. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh uh, man. Yes. <laughs> Rachel's been like Rachel was on a call one time and she kept on trying to get my attention <laughs> to make this oh, guy stop Lord. talking. I was sitting there and I just, I almost like wanted, I almost, she would have had like, something I to do this and, yeah, I was talking to someone and she was, this is when we were upstairs and she was like at her desk. I was and the person was just, I didn't say one word for about 40 minutes. And the whole time I'm over here like this, like trying to get her attention. I'm like, help. I'm like, help. And I even look at her like, hello. And this guy just had no clue. Well, you know, what's funny about that. I ran into that guy at Low Mill um, this past weekend and let's see who called me. Somebody called me like about two minutes into the conversation where it was just, I was being talked at and somebody mm-hmm. called me and I was like, Oh, I gotta take this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, just uh, just so you know, they're, they're not everybody's going to be peaches and sunflowers. It's going to be <laughs> yep. <laughs> get those yeah. annoying ones. 
but yeah. you know, find yeah. people who are will fit. be your, um, your cheerleaders for sure, but also hold you accountable. So yeah, your advocate basically, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, those are two really good questions. Um, yeah. uh, I can't wait to see what more we get. So you guys email us your questions. We'll be happy to answer them. And um, we just are so thankful for you guys. And uh, if you like what you hear again, leave us a review and um, I'll take Rachel's line until next time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Artist Soar, a podcast for artists by artists. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at hello at artistsoar.com. And be sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that you can get more of us and we can bring in some sponsors to help you and help us.